So originally, this is going to be a different video, but some things that have been going on in the art community made me want to talk about something that's been bothering me for a while. There's an expectation in the art community that I believe can be summed up by this tweet from a few weeks ago that reads, quote, Every artist are obligated to be able to draw fat slash chubby proportions, black skin tones and features, disabled characters, etc. Doesn't matter the style, if you're an artist, you must know how to draw them. The tweet got a lot of people talking in the comments, but I don't want to dwell on the tweet for too long. Because this was a while ago and the topic of conversation goes much deeper and further than that single tweet. This statement is a reflection of expectations that have actually existed silently for quite a while. What I briefly want to talk about is how these expectations are enforced in the art community and how it's impacting us as artists and the way we view and criticize other artists. The expectation that every artist must know how to draw all different types of people is daunting for some, believing it's harsh to push this idea onto artists who are just trying to create what they love. Some believe representation is important and refusing to learn how to draw diverse people leaves out minority groups. I'm with the former and the latter. I believe being able to draw diverse people is a good goal to set personally, however if one doesn't want to strive for such a goal, that's their decision. That's not to say that you shouldn't learn to diversify your art. Representation is very important, and that's something I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But I think the way this standard is held is harmful because not every artist is proficient at everything. Every artist has to start somewhere, and it takes time to learn these skills. And criticizing any artist who doesn't meet this expectation right out the gate can be pretty harmful, especially if the criticism is done wrong. And that brings me to the group who this affects the most, beginning artists. No matter what people on the internet may tell you, being proficient at drawing different types of people is hard. Very hard. Drawing larger body types is not as easy as make them wider. Drawing black characters is not as easy as just slide on the color wheel. The anatomy, facial structure, hair, squish and stretch of the body, the way it interacts with its environment, clothes and lighting, the list is endless and difficult to learn. And that takes time. A lot of time. However, due to the way this expectation of being able to draw everyone accurately is held in the community, I have seen far too many new artists getting ganged up on for their mistakes. Hear what I said. Mistakes things non-intentional, mistakes that come from inexperience, inexperience that they are clearly trying to better themselves from. Drawing black characters or drawing larger body type characters or drawing disabled characters, new artists will get it wrong. I expect them to get it wrong. And when they do, we as a community should be there to help them, critique them properly and politely so they can take the support we give and grow from their mistakes. However, some people push their expectations onto these new artists and slam them for the mistakes they make. It's very common for people to take a beginner artist's art and absolutely roast them for drawing minority characters incorrectly, and others are quick to join in. This is normal on Twitter and especially TikTok. People making fun of these beginner artists end up forming entire waves of people who take what could have been a simple critique and turn it into a fucking beatdown. All because they're assuming the artist is purposefully neglecting the character they are drawing. That's not how they're supposed to look. You should know better. Why would you do this? They don't even consider the fact the artist is inexperienced and is trying to do what they ask. Learn to draw diverse people correctly. And I'm not hinting at any specific instance because this is common. Look at any recent fandom's art. You will see this exact thing happening. A few examples of fandoms I've recently seen this in are in Man of the Adventurer, Owl House, Hell of a Boss, Spider-Verse. Throughout all these fandoms and more, there are plenty of examples of beginner artists being harassed, threatened, and doxxed just for missing certain details or accidentally leaving out specific details that a beginner artist might overlook. Enforcing this expectation that you must learn how to draw all diverse types of people and then spitting on new artists who are trying to fight to reach that goal is awful, especially if the community tries to lump them in with the actual scummy people. You know, the blatant whitewashers, the people who go out of the way to erase non-white features, the people who intentionally slim down characters with big body types because quote, it doesn't fit their style. People like that are assholes who know what they're doing. And this video is not for, nor is it about people like them. But when the community jumps an inexperienced artist and tells them that they are like these scummy people, that is not good criticism that will encourage them to improve. If anything, it either runs them off the platform or makes them not want to step out of their comfort zone and challenge themselves in their art for a while, which could lead to the artist later being criticized for not drawing any characters besides the same types they always draw. 
We as a community need to realize beginner artists need a different type of criticism than what we use in more experienced artists. Although, those few points do bring me to the other side of the spectrum, experienced artists. While the conversation regarding beginner artists is on us as a community to help encourage and guide our beginner artists instead of cramming a standard down their throat and ostracizing them for not meeting it immediately, the conversation about more experienced artists is much more difficult. The conversation gets much more ideals based when we talk about experienced artists. Experienced artists have had time to hone their craft. They have developed understandings of anatomy, facial structures, etc. And some are capable of godlike abilities. There are artists who can draw anything and everything they want to, and good for them. They deserve to be recognized. But what about experienced artists who develop a massive following, understanding all these concepts, and even make tutorials to teach other artists these concepts, but they still completely ostracize certain groups of people from their art or refuse to diversify their art altogether? There are plenty, and when I say plenty, I mean an unfortunate majority of bigger artists in the community who are incredible and experienced they seem to be able to draw anything, but they only draw characters that fit their small standards of beauty or attractiveness. You see tons of experienced artists who only draw characters of only the same skin color, or maybe the same face, same body type, or same gender, etc., usually leaning towards more slim, fair-skinned characters. The question is, is this bad? Does that make the artist problematic in some way? We see controversies like this regularly. One previous one that's gone on for a while is Sam does art's same face syndrome and how he only draws female characters with the same face that he seemed to find attractive to him, at a few points completely changing the features of living people in his art to fit his idea of beauty. For a full breakdown how things went with that, you can watch my 10 minute video on it. But another example of a very recent, still current controversy is one with Colleen, who not only refuses to diversify their art, but their whole gig is to critique and change other artists' art, in which they usually erase features or characteristics that do not fit their idea of beauty. The features they find unattractive, or quote, gorilla looking in her words, being ones usually found in non-white characters. In these controversies, many popular artists have taken the stance that artists can draw whatever they want and don't owe their viewer anything, and I somewhat agree until a certain line. The expectation that artists should be able to draw all different types of people is an expectation, not a requirement no matter how much some may feel it should be. But what about our popular media, like our stories, our animations, our film? I strongly believe we need more positive representation for all minority groups in media. Just recently at my college's local convention, I held a panel about black representation in animation. And in that presentation, I and a few other black colleagues spoke on the history of black representation in animation, the steps we've taken to improve it, and why it's so important. And it was such an important message, I plan on turning that into a video as well. But if we believe artists don't need to diversify their art and only draw whatever they want, what would that mean for things like animation, our shows, and our stories? Personally, I think that problem sorts itself out thanks to the awareness of the community. There used to be stories that only portrayed one type of people, and the few times it did portray other types of people were in such bad faith it makes us wish it never happened in the first place. However, now we as a community are aware of representation, inclusion, diversity, and its importance. Artists that refuse to diversify their art for whatever reason are in the right to do so, but it will always remain their art. Their art could never represent the people they leave out, and the unrepresented people will always notice that they will turn away and that artists will lose those viewers. I believe artists who don't diversify their art pigeonhole themselves and suffocate their potential. They will grow for a while, but eventually they will need to change something. If they don't, eventually that artist will hit a wall. They won't continue to grow as they used to because they refuse to diversify their art. If it's some artists, that's okay. Those artists will stay as they are and continue doing what they do, while other artists will go out and challenge themselves. They'll take on the task of diversifying their art. They will go on to make stories that everyone can enjoy. They will be able to say they could represent everybody with their art. Is that something you have to do? No. But being able to represent everybody within your art, that's an amazing goal, isn't it? Some popular artists like Kuleen don't care about that. They make things in their image what's attractive to them, which is fine when they make their personal art. However, when these artists make it part of their content to teach others how to make art, which most of these experienced artists do, while not allowing your own art to be diverse, whether intentional or not, they are quietly pushing their biases onto other artists. This goes even further when you teach habits that straight up erase certain features of non-white characters. It's important that we as a community learn that these artists have committed to their biases, and we should always take their advice with a full shaker of salt. 
we should be able to continue questioning the things we think overstep the blurred line of, it's okay, it's just my personal art, and art meant to influence others. These discussions are already taking place. You've just sat through one, and having discussions like this is an important step in the right direction. Please feel free to continue the discussion in the comments. Again, I make these art discussion videos like this because I believe that discussion is important. Discussion, not cyber war. But yeah, go on and have a discussion in the comments. I want to know what you think. Also, if there's any other art discussion you'd like to see on this channel, then please ask. Alright, see you later.